Hi, it's Mike Hall again here with Utasic. Today I'm coming from the GoTo Conf in Chicago, uh, GoTo Chicago. I'm sitting down with Hattie Hariri, who is a uh, well, you're a developer evangelist with JetBrain, and one of the talks he was going to be giving today is on on being a anti-social geek is harmful, which I think is actually very thematic for what Utastic is, and it's trying to support people who participate in community and get out from behind the desks. So, you know, th thank you again for sitting down with me. Um, what what is an anti-social geek uh, if we don't already know what it is? And, and, and why is it why is it harmful? <laughs> well, that's uh, <laughs> so. There's there's uh, the, you know uh, there's easy there's an easy way to get a, a, a talk mm -hmm. in a conference with a catchy title, yeah. right? So it's not that anti that we're anti-social. I mean, if you define anti-social as someone that wants to disrupt and uh, um, be aggressive towards others mm -hmm. and their rights, we're not. Right. We're not anti-social. We're anti-social in the sense of we're not really you know into socializing yeah. as much as other it's people. It's not misanthropic. Yeah. It's just a little going bit. In yeah. So um, the the talk is more more about communication and uh, interaction between mm -hmm. developers, right? And it's it's more about the experience that I've had over the twenty plus years of interacting with different developers with different teams, having run a, my own company and seeing the problems that communication or lack of it mm -hmm. causes between developers and teams okay. and it's you know often you find like in our industry it's become common to say that you know in uh, developers are introverts right developers you know don't don't mind him you know Steve is great at developing but you can't really talk to him right and I think that we are ignoring this and we're kind of accepting that you can't talk to Steve as opposed right. to trying to Find out why you can't talk to Steve. Find out why you can't talk to certain people or why there's so much friction when you're talking to certain people. And what happens is that we end up with teams where certain people, certain indiv individuals are isolated mm -hmm. and, and that I, I feel that impacts the team, it impacts the, the code, it impacts the company, it impacts the goals, everything. Mm -hmm. And just happiness. Happiness. Yeah. That you're kind of pigeonholed into this you're a developer, therefore you don't want to talk to anybody. You're a developer, therefore you just want to sit in a dark room. And it, it's not, I've seen this culture of we all sit in a dark room and nobody talks. And then we all go out to lunch and then everybody just chat, 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 chat. Which kind of leads me to believe is that people actually do want to talk and they do want to share. But we have this stigma or this preconceived notion of the way we're supposed to act. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're great. I mean, it's not that, you know, it's a myth that developers are introverts. They're not introverts. What what we don't like, and I've discussed this in my other uh, talk, the prima donna one that I talk about, is that we don't like small talk. Mm. And when I the first time I said that to me, uh, gave that talk, someone said to me, "What do you have against the language small talk?" No, <laughs> <laughs> it just proves yeah, my yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. It's like yeah, hold on, right? Yeah, exactly. uh, we don't like small talk. So we we love to debate. We love to just sit there and you know, debate things on end and bring our points and make sure that we have the last point and we're right. Sometimes we don't realize that it, it's time to back off. Sometimes we don't realize that it doesn't matter of, you know, making a concise point about something. Mm -hmm. It's, we, we miss the big picture, right? And it, it's, I, I kind of feel it's these skills that often we're lacking, yeah. right? Because we, you know, like I, I think that it's very good for developers to work in technical support mm -hmm. because you learn to deal with customers. You learn to know when to back off, you know when to concede, to say, okay, well, you're wrong, but I'm not going to tell you you're wrong right. because of this. Because it's I in the end, it's just not worth the battle. It's not worth the battle. And what happens is that with teams, when, you, when you're with someone that is constantly trying to prove his point, mm -hmm. it ends up that you're like, okay, well, just do whatever you want, you know, and that do whatever you want can impact your product. It can impact your whatever you're developing, but you're like, well, it's not worth the friction to to dispute or debate with this guy. Mm -hmm. Okay. And there's a lot of people that don't realize that at some point it's it's better to back off. It's better to, you know, again, not 
miss the, the, the point that we're trying to do, right? Well, what is it that we're, we're here for? Yeah, recently myself, I've uh, had to work in a non-developer role and getting to see, um, most dealing with HR uh, people, and getting to see how different, because what you described about the way developers tend to talk when we're amongst other developers, and then going into um, a human resources where it's very much not as, as rigid as development. Uh, they have rules and they have their protocols, but the, the mode of conversation is much different, um, uh, much more, I don't want to say casual, but it, it, it is different. And I, I'm, I'm struggling to figure out how to... It is because, you know, we, are, we, we, we try and apply um, our coding principles to our conversations, yeah. like dry. Yes, uh, I, why do I have to repeat myself? Or say the minimum possible for it to be efficient, you know, like yeah. ultimate efficiency when we speak. And yeah. sometimes it's not about efficiency, right? Sometimes it truly is about talking about the weather or some nonsense or whatever yeah. to break the ice, to, to try and understand the other person, right? And, yeah. and that's one other thing that I feel that is lacking a little bit in the developer word, world, which is con conveying emotions. Like, you know, we don't have a lot of empathy often. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, you've seen, no doubt, you've been involved in open source, right? Mm -hmm. And recently, there was some some lady that had uh, put up some code on open source, and there was such a backslash, backlash on it on mm -hmm. Twitter. Like, who would put up rubbish like this? And right. when you get high-profile people putting things like that, yeah, it hurts people. And we don't think about these things. You know, we don't think about how our actions in the goal of saying that something is right or wrong can end up hurting other people. Yeah, and it's kind of interesting how you, how you are describing the, the I, I don't want to say lack of empathy, but it sounds like more of a underused empathy muscle. <laughs> yeah. Um, that you know, we, we can relate to each other, but we haven't, many of us haven't uh, developed that, that, that skill dealing with other people. In, 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 a, in, a, in a more benign way, I'm thinking of uh, in the HR role I've, I've had is working with developers as they're onboarding and trying to get people who've only been at a company under seven months or so uh, to talk to somebody who's starting today. And when I'm talking to the person who's you know only six, seven months there, they think, well, I don't know enough to be able to give useful information to this person. And I don't want to say it's a lack of empathy, but they, they don't remember how to empathize with what it was like to be that new person and realize that they do have a lot of experience that they could share that could be useful for that that person and it's it's they can't put themselves back in that role of not yeah. knowing it's like like as adults we forget what it's like to be a child it's if you're a parent it's it's hard sometimes to remember um but it's it's an it's a it's an empathy deficit yeah. it seems like um now as a developer evangelist you have to deal with a lot of people i'm sure yeah. So, uh, you know, dealing with communities, has there been, has that, has this view that you have now that, and where this talk came from and, and even the prima donna's talk you, you, you mentioned earlier, is that coming from your experiences largely dealing with so many ver varied communities, .NET, Java, PHP, Ruby, JavaScript, well, Python? Yeah, but I mean, I'm, you know, I'm not going to bad mouth the developer community far from it because I'm still a right. developer myself. Uh, but I, I feel that there is a little bit of a lacking. I mean, I, you know, I, I, I work at, I, I work at a lot of conferences and I stand at a lot of booths and I see that it's very often it's hard to engage conversation with with people because people are shy to come up and say, you know, like what do you do or whatever. And so I have found it, but but more than. In, as a, and as evangelist coming across this, it, I've, it's been more my experience with, with teams that I've worked with or teams that I've worked mm -hmm. on, right? And it's more about the, the actual root problems that often there have been in, in teams. And I've, I've learned to deal with people more openly and be kind of like, you know, more open in that mm -hmm. a lot when I was dealing with customers. I okay. mean, when I had to talk to customers, and, and that's why I say, I mean, customer support is, is one of the best things that developers should do. I mean, I have had to deal with customers, you know, doing technical support in ISP where, you know, the guy would call and say, I can't, 
um, send email and you would say are you connected to the internet and he would say I don't want to go to the internet yeah, I want to send email, email right yeah. you have to learn to deal with that yeah. and it gives you patience and it teaches you how to talk to people because you can't hang up the phone yeah. and say you're, you're too stupid to send me right. you can't well and, and the thing is is again it goes to the empathy remembering that once upon a time you were in the was, same boat you know you may have been a child when it happened but once upon a time you did not know what the internet was yeah. and, and and trying to remember uh, one um you know this this reminds me of uh, a uh, scenario i'd experienced in the military where i was dealing with a bunch of new recruits and asking them where they which which jobs they were going to be taking and uh, of course you know, one was a medic and one was going to go to language school and one was going to be in an mp and the other one was kind of uh said um, i'm just gonna be a truck driver and you know, that kind of took me back she was she was really like eh, you know i'm not as good as these other people and you just not she also like kind of from the other end forgot that she was going to be providing a very valuable service and that, that what she was doing was important and that she was a human being and, and had value. And, and when we're looking at our you know, ivory towers, we have these very fancy jobs. We're senior engineers and we're, we have these very illustrious titles. And we forget that we couldn't have that without the truck driver who carries the computers. That, that we're all part of this. That if that customer didn't call in and say, I want to send an email, I don't want to get on the internet. If it wasn't for that person, that we wouldn't even we wouldn't even be able to exist. Um, you know, much like the truck driver, you couldn't even have an infantry without having the trucker who could bring the stuff, the supplies. The well, the factory ordinance. worker that puts the chips together right. on the computer that you're using right. every day. And it's it, every yeah. every. And, and it's that we exist as part of an ecosystem. Yeah. That that you know that we if we can remember that maybe it might uh, I don't want to say humble but just be more aware. Well, I definitely think there's the w w uh, you know there is that that missing mm -hmm. in, in in the developer community. I think we need we all need to be a little bit more humble. We yeah. all need to come down back down to earth and think about what we are doing as part of a, the global picture, as yeah. opposed to our personal goals. Uh, and there was an ar an article recently, in fact, on I think it was on Forbes or somewhere about whether we are the they were putting a comparison of. Uh, are we the Lindsay Lohan or are we the Meryl Streep of the of Hollywood? You know, mm -hmm. as opposed to are we in this startup business of getting venture capitalists and cashing out quick, or are we there to try and really change the world and grow up a business and grow it steadily, etc. And I often find that we we're kind of more moving towards that big you know hotshot Hollywood kind right. of thing, right? Well, yeah, it's it's the uh, the. Uh, the, the rock star, the ninja. Yeah, the, the ninja, uh, the rock Yeah, yeah. It's, it's very it's fancy. All it's, yeah, it's all that. And it's, it's again, that's that desire to put ourselves up on, on, a, on a higher pedestal instead of realizing, okay, we're we're part of an ecosystem that you know, we, we can't do these things without each other. And that's one of the reasons that I wanted to support um, and, and make um, user group organizers and conference organizers, the people that bring people together, that's one of the reasons I do these interviews is to help expose that to support to support the people that build the community and and realize that we're in this kind of together and it's more fun to do it together than to do it alone. everyone plays a role everyone is important yes well thank you very much for taking the time thank to you me. i really it appreciate a pleasure. it pleasure having me. thank you Sorry. <laughs>